Today on the channel, we're kicking off a brand new video series on the channel, the Kyle Peterson Top 5, and we're kicking it off with the Legion of Doom Road Warriors. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for an inaugural video series. Something I'm going to do on maybe a weekly basis, maybe a semi-regular basis. We'll see how it goes. But as you guys can imagine, I get a lot of messages here on YouTube. I get a lot of messages on my Twitter, at SirPaul64. The underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on Instagram. I get a lot of messages saying, hey Kyle, who's your five, or what's your top ten favorite wrestlers of all time? What's your top ten Ultimate Warriors? What's your top ten Wolverine figures? Questions like that. And it got my mind going and I said, how about a new video series where we do the Kyle Peterson top five? I might do a couple of top tens in there, maybe on some special characters like the Ultimate Warrior for one. Uh, but how about a top five? A, a good snackable content, maybe 10, 15 minutes tops. And uh, we'll see where we go. But I said, you know what? The top five sounds like a great idea to me. So that's what we're going to roll with. And this isn't just top five, say, Ultimate Warrior. This could be top five Mattel Elites of all time. Top five LJNs of all time. This could be the top five Luke Skywalker figures. Top five Power of the Force figures. Top five Marvel Legends. Top five Marvel Legends Wolverines. You see the pattern I'm building there. Uh, so there's a lot of videos that could be done in this. As you guys know, I got quite a few figures. I think I got a... I got one or two. So we could do these and we could show the figures off and see and talk about it and maybe have some discussion about it. And then the thing I'm excited for is hopefully you guys can put in the comments below your five favorites, your five favorites of whatever line we're talking about. I think it could be a really good interactive process. So we're going to kick off the Kyle Peterson top five with something you guys know I love. You guys know I love big figures. I love masks. I love face paint. I love tattoos. And I love the LOD Road Warriors. Whatever you want to call them, the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors. One of, if not, no, they are. I'm not even going to say one of. They are the baddest tag team of all time. I love the Road Warriors, probably like a lot of you guys. Doesn't take a lot to impress little Kyle. Big jacked up dudes, spiked shoulder pads, uh, face paint. That's a game changer all day long. You guys know I'm excited. I love the LOD. I'm excited to do the first Kyle Peterson Top 5 on the Legion of Doom Road Warriors. All right, let's kick it off. My top five favorite LOD figures of all time. We're kicking it off at number five. We're going to count it down to number one. Number five, Bone Crunchers. Jack's Bone Crunching Figures. Series 1 Tag Teams, Legion of Doom. Talk about a game changer. As you guys probably are aware, maybe, maybe you aren't, maybe you are. This was the dying days of my toy playing days. I was probably too old by some means out there to be playing with toys, but I was buying them. I was setting them up, and oh, you know every once in a while the Godwins and the LOD would be throwing down. Uh, it just had to happen. They were just calling out each other across my room as a kid. Uh, but these were a game changer for me. Obviously, I had the LOD Hasbro's back in the day, but I truly feel the Bone Crunchers were the greatest playability-wise wrestling figures of all time. It seems kind of strange because a lot of people turn their nose down on them. Uh, I love the Hasbro's. I love the LJN. That was the majority of my playing days. But the Bone Crunchers came in right at the end and just... Uh, the size, the flexibility of them, they kind of had that softness of an LJN. They weren't quite as, they weren't at all as plasticky as the Hasbros. They just really are. And if you were there, if you were of the age that was involved in this, you exactly get what I mean. Uh, these kids these days don't know how good they have it with the Mattels and AEW Jazzwear figures out there and what those figures do. But playability-wise during my time, the Bone Crunchers were next level. And I remember distinctively walking to Toys R Us one day. My dad and I went to Toys R Us multiple times a week. We had to. We were on the hunt for something at all times. Both of us were. And I remember walking in and seeing Series 1 of the Bone Crunchers. Had no idea these were coming out. We had the Bendums before that. I was all out. I didn't want anything to do with the Bendums. I just kept playing Hasbros. Uh, that was it for me. But then there it was. There was the Bone Crunchers. I bought that whole first series right off the bat, right when I saw them. And then I, my mind got racing. Who else are they going to make? Who else is possibly coming out? And it wasn't too long. I think it was 1997, I want to say. Uh, early 97? I could be off. But the LOD came out, and you know I was all in. We already had our Ultimate Warrior. But to get the LOD and the Bone Crunching action, 
Sign me up all day long. I was so excited. I love the removable spikes on these guys. That was such a game changer. As you guys knew with the uh, Hasbros back in the day, the spikes were on there. Uh, these were removable, so you could have them wearing these coming down to the aisle. You could take them off, have an actual match with them. Just truly ahead of its time for the time frame. Now people would laugh at a figure like this if it came out, but you put yourself in there, and I put myself in that frame of mind where I had no idea these were coming out. It was a total surprise, just like Bone Cruncher Series 1 was. It just was a game changer for young Kyle. And to get my favorite tag team of all time in this scale for all those other figures... I uh, just amazing. Like I said, these guys in the Godwins had some epic matches. The new Blackjacks were in there. Just game changer for me. I was so happy to have these. And that's why LOD comes in at number five. All right, next up in our LOD Road Warriors countdown, we're at number four, and we're going to the classic Superstars series, a set that series that is so near and dear to my heart, I have a room dedicated. I built a room in my house around my classic Superstars collection. That's how big of a fan I am, and these two were a big reason of it. Series six, Jack's classic Superstars as Hawk takes a dive, the LOD. But most people think of LOD all the time in their red attire. This is the blue attire. I always think WCW Japan when I think blue attire LOD. And you guys know, a set like this, I had to have men on card and I had to have a loose set for these guys. Uh, there was no way around that, so I got them all right here. But when these came out, I said, oh my gosh, this is what I've been dreaming of. We've had the Reds in the past and the Hasbros, as you know, the Bone Crunchers, which we talked about before. But to get the LOD in blue was just next level. Uh, and Truth be told, this may be my favorite color the LOD wore. Uh, this blue really pops. Uh, maybe I was so used to the red and then even the black and stuff back in the NWA when I really first started watching wrestling. The blue is such a bright color and such a change. It just... Simple color change seemed to re reinvigorate uh, the LOD in young Kyle's brain. And this jumped off the shelves immediately when I saw these. Absolutely fell in love with these. And to this day are a top favorite LOD team for me. And I even put this Jack set over the Mattel Basics set that was released. Uh, spoiler alert, the Mattel Basics will not be in my top five. This is uh, the defining blue pad, blue gear LOD in my eyes. And like I said, when I saw this was coming out, I was so excited. This even got a re-release during the dying days of Jack's Class Superstars. When they re-released some popular figures, they sent the LOD back out in the shelves because they knew they were going to sell. You guys know it. It's the mantra of the channel. Face paint, masks. We got to add spikes to it. Uh, big wrestlers, tattoos. You put those on somebody, guess what? They're moving off the pegs, and Jax knew that. That's why they re-released this tag team here. Uh, this is a next-level set, and one of the greatest tag team sets Jax Class Superstars ever did uh, in the solo career sets. They didn't put these two together. These were a repaint of Series 1 classic tag teams that were in the red. I like that set, too, but doesn't hold a candle, in my opinion, to this set. Very, very strong set, and that's why it's at number four for me. All right, we're to the number three spot now. We're back with the LOD Mattel Legend Series. Now, this is our first entry of Mattel. Will it be our last? Stay tuned. But Mattel, Legion of Doom, nope, Road Warriors. Old school NWA Road Warriors. This looks like it jumps right out of the screen of that old NWA video game. If you had that as a kid for the original Nintendo, uh, I had that. I had to do a radio commercial to get money to get that. Maybe that's a story for another day. Got paid in a Toys R Us gift certificate, and that's what I picked out, that NWA wrestling game for Nintendo. Uh, but these two, the minute I saw these were announced, I basically fell to my knees. I said, you've got to be kidding me. I'm getting classic NWA Road Warriors. We were so close in the Jax Classic Superstars line. I believe it was Series 9. We got Hawk in this kind of a getup, the old NWA, but we never got Animal. But to get these two together in the same set, they weren't in a, a two-pack. They were solo releases. I'll take it any way I can get it. I don't know about you. But I love these LOD figures. Black. This is LOD at their meanest, their grittiest, their dirtiest. This is what I remember just being awestruck of as a little kid. And I remember getting VHS tapes at the at the movie store and hearing Black Sabbath for the first time ever. Uh, later on, as I got into heavy metal when I was about 12 years old, I understood what Black Sabbath was. But 
eight, nine-year-old Kyle, he had no idea what he was hearing. He just thought he was hearing just the music of the gods and uh, the face-painted tag team gods of wrestling. And that's what the Road Warriors were to me. Next level, unbelievable excitement. And this truly brings me back to my childhood when I was first introduced to the Road Warriors. So there's no way these guys weren't going to be on my top five list. And that's why they come in at a very strong number three. All right, number two, we're almost to the end. Number two, Hasbro Legion of Doom. You guys probably assume they'd be on the list. I guarantee a lot of you guys right now are scratching your head and saying, what could be number one possibly for Kyle? Stay tuned, you'll find out. But number two is a no-brainer for me. The Hasbro line for kids my age, this was wrestling figures. This was the most, the most amount of my friends. We always talk about the old playground, the old schoolyard. The majority of my friends were all in on the Hasbros. LJNs, there was a couple of kids that dabbled. Bone Crunchers, there was very few that dabbled. But everybody seemed to dabble in the Hasbros. I was of that age group. And these two, when they came out, holy cow. Very similar to the other ones I talked about, but I was playing my Hasbros. I loved them. We got three Ultimate Warriors. We got a couple of Hogans out there. Demolition was right off the bat, and then we got Demolition with Crush. There was so much that I loved about that, but I was always hoping one day that we'd get the LOD. And then when the LOD finally came to the WWF, I said, oh my gosh, there's a chance we might finally get figures of them. And then there it was, the new tag team set, and it had the LOD in it. The excitement, I still remember going to my Toys R Us uh, on University, I remember walking through the front doors. Remember the old days of Toys R Us? I'm sure most stores were set up one or two ways. My store was you walked in and then there was like a little, oh, about five feet high gondola shelving and you'd have to turn and go around it and then you'd turn a corner and you'd walk and then that would open up to the whole store. Right as you made that turn, they had an eight foot section full of Hasbro's, floor to ceiling, and there was a good three feet uh, window ribbon of all the new tag team sets. And I saw LOD a mile away. I remember just being excited. I didn't know what I was doing. I felt like I was in a dream. I wanted my dad to uh, pinch me. I think I might have passed out in the store. I'm not sure. But my dad knew we were coming home with the LOD. We couldn't leave the LOD on the shelves. There was no way. This was truly a game changer in my playing days. These guys took the tag titles night one. They came into my figure fed and they just ran rough shot over everybody. They joined up with the ultimate warrior what a three pack of figures i mean it was just next level and these lod just i loved them to death i loved them from day one and it's so funny all these years later many many years later has gone by there's been tons of hasbro discussion there's been videos youtube series books lots of discussion about hasbros and one thing i do see that comes up with the legion of doom all the time which i find very funny uh, because I go back and I never thought this, but a lot of kids said, ah, I hated the LOD because they had their shoulder pads stuck to them. You couldn't take them off. And then I heard the same thing about Roddy Piper being in his kilt and Teddy Biasi in his suit. And I don't know if I was just a dumb kid or what, that never bothered me one time when I was a kid. I don't know if I could just use my imagination and suspend disbelief and I didn't have an issue with it, but it never crossed my mind until many, many years later I heard people complain about it. I said, I never had an issue with that. I guess I just played with them and pretended they weren't really there. I don't remember ever using them in battle like, oh, they got their spikes on and they're you know, making somebody bleed. I never did that as a kid. I just straight up played with them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I just had a great imagination or maybe a lack of imagination, but these were such a game changer. I think I could have looked through anything. Um, these are just LOD, bright red, bright face paint, uh, just next level. And this was this was when LOD became safe. They came became safer, more mainstream for all the kids. It wasn't Kyle out there in the schoolyard saying, "Oh, you guys gotta know about this Road Warriors." I felt like I was always speaking a foreign language to the kids on the schoolyard uh, because I knew about WCW, I knew about NWA, and nobody else did. They knew about WWE, WWF. And open your eyes, Saturday, 5.05, you know, that's all you got to do. And nobody would ever do it. I think they were fine with their hour on Saturday morning of superstars, and that was it. But young kids, and I'm sure a ton of you guys are the same way as I am, that was just like, that was an appetizer, superstars. I need more. I need All-American Wrestling. I need Wrestling Challenge. I need WCW Saturday Night. I need the NWA Power Hour. I need uh, the GWF and AWA on ESPN. I, I don't know what I would have done if I was a young kid and we had the WWE Network. I would have absolutely lost my mind as a little kid. I don't know if I would have ever left the house. I probably would have flunked out of school. 
I was just rabid for as much as I could get. The weekends, Dad, can we go rent VHS tapes? Uh, pay-per-views, Dad, please, can we get the cable box? Can we get pay-per-views? And my dad would hook me up because he knew how important it was. We had to follow what the warrior was up, be it the Ultimate Warrior or the Road Warriors Legion of Doom. But magical time, it'll never happen again in my lifetime. I always wish my kids had this feeling about toys. Unfortunately, they really don't. But uh, boy, this is game changer for me. Game changer for me, and that's why it's number two. But what is number one, you ask? What can top this? Well, they're up next. All right, everybody, we've come to the number one spot. This has been fun. I'm getting excited. I'm going back. I'm going through my mental Rolodex as a kid in my teen years and me just collecting uh, some of my favorite superstars. This is really fun for me to talk about some of this stuff, I'm trying to stop being long-winded. But we're to the number one spot. And like I said, you guys are probably scratching your head. What could be number one? Is it a micro brawler? Is it a basic uh, Mattel? Is it one of the Mattel Elite sets out there? Is it a classic superstars of some sort? What could be the last one? Is it, uh, you know, the AWA Remco figures? There's been a few LODs throughout the years, but it's none of those. Well, it is one of those. Uh, and it's really the forgotten LOD Legion of Doom 2-pack. Uh, most people don't even know this exists because it flew really under the radar. And if you weren't a hardcore collector back in the day, you weren't somebody paying attention to the internet especially, you wouldn't even know this thing existed. So uh, a lot of people see this and they ask me, Kyle, what's your favorite? I've told a lot of friends and stuff my favorite LOD pack, and uh, they have no idea this one even existed. So uh, you'll have to ask yourself when I show you this here in a second, do, did I know this existed or not? Well, it is the Jax Classic Superstars Tag Team ProFigures.com exclusive LOD Classic Superstars pack. Uh, there it is. I feel like we're doing a Classic Superstars video here, the way I'm showing on the camera. But this is the definitive LOD 2 pack to me. Yes, this isn't the classic black. This isn't the blue, the classic red. But as far as mean, bad looking dudes, amazing sculpts, amazing bodies, this is LOD the way I wanted him to always look. Look at Animal, how beefed up he is. Hawk, you know, a little slimmer, but still just could rip your head off. Awesome shoulder pads with the black and red together. Next level face paint plus the tag team titles in there. This is the defining LOD 2 pack for me and this is the one that changed the game. I remember ordering this off profigures.com and just being absolutely blown away. Just taking this thing I said this is just the most amazing looking LOD I've ever seen and it still holds up. Whenever I think of LOD figures I always go back to this one and like I said it's very forgotten is classic superstars a lot of people remember the ringside collectibles exclusives but they also remember the ringside convention exclusives and then the toy fair exclusives the 1 of 100s 1 of 25s but there was more exclusives even on top of that. We had WWE shop zone exclusives those really flew under the radar in the dying days where they picked up some of the two packs from Toys R Us as Toys R Us said we're done but then profigures.com I don't even believe they're around anymore but they had a lot of different exclusives over the years from Jax very interesting I don't know if it was to keep ringside on their toes or hey most likely like most businesses guess what we're here to make money we're not a non-profit Pro figures, you want to sign up for 5,000 LOD figures? Yeah, we'll sell them to you. I think that's more of how it went. I'm not sure if Pro figures is still around. Somebody can leave me a comment. Maybe you remember it. I remember ordering a lot of figures from them back in the day. Uh, but LOD Crown Jewel right here. Like I said, doesn't get better than this for me. Uh, just big, beefy, amazing, colorful face paint, the tag titles, classic superstars, my favorite set of all time. Just everything here together just says winner. I would love nothing more, and I would need to find it one day. Very expensive set right here. Probably the most expensive LOD Classic Superstar set. I'm, I'm fairly certain this is uh, the most expensive by a pretty far margin. I would love to have a loose set of these. I really need this. Uh, it's a shame I didn't buy two of these back in the day, but as I've told the story before, I was all about men on card back then. I had all the room in the world. I said, oh, I don't need all this. I was all men on card during the Classic Superstars days. Now I wish I really doubled up on a lot of them as you could have got these at a fairly reasonable price back then. Uh, now there's no way. I never see these come up for sale loose. You rarely see them come up uh, for sale mint on card, but it truly is a crown jewel and a forgotten jewel of the Class Superstar set. 
and the LOD completionist set out there. So there's a lot of amazing LOD figures, that is for sure. And uh, this set takes the cake. Uh, surprisingly, maybe you were surprised. You tell me. What did you think my number one would be? So I hope you enjoyed this top five. I think we can have a lot of fun with this series. Maybe you guys should tell me who to do next. I think I'm going to save the Ultimate Warrior for later down. Maybe when we hit 10,000 subscribers, you guys could help with that. Hit the old subscribe button. Once we hit 10,000 subscribers, I think I'll probably do the Ultimate Warrior Top 10. If I can wait that long. I'll try, though. I'm going to try to hold it back, and uh, we'll do an Ultimate Warrior Top 10. But I want to try to maybe do a weekly Top 5. Uh, maybe you guys would be interested in that. Maybe you can help me choose. Maybe it's, hey, Kyle, choose your Top 5 Randy Orton's, or it could be Luke Skywalker's, or really anything in the realm of what I collect. Maybe it's your Top 5 He-Man figures, um, Top 5 figures you don't own that maybe you would like to. There's a lot of stuff we can go. So we'll see where it goes from here, but I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, give it a little like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. We're climbing towards 10,000. Once we hit 10,000 subscribers, we'll probably launch that Warrior video. I got a ton of stuff for giveaways. We're going to probably bring my dad on. I think he's got a lot of good stuff to say that I think you guys might be interested in. And a whole lot more. So make sure you're subscribed. And then in the comments, let me know your thoughts. What would you like to see as a top five? Do we need to do this every week? Should I do it once a month? Should I never do it again? Maybe somebody will say that out there. So you guys let me know your thoughts. This is kind of the pilot. We'll say this is the pilot episode. We'll see if it goes on from here or not. But really interested in your comments, so leave them below. Like, comment, and subscribe. You know, that's what they always say. So for the LOD, the Road Warriors, and even Paul Ellering. Gotta mention Paul Ellering. And maybe Kazuki Sasaki, too. I don't know. But uh, for the Road Warriors, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.